G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Halliborn with Mags. So today we are here on Halliborn completely alone unfortunately and we're taking a look at Halliborn's test server. This is, well this is actually a bit more than the regular test server, this is Halliborn's development server. So we might capture this space while we're over here. We're going to be having a look at some of the new features coming up in the next pa- Oh, Jesus, we're already being under attack for our ground forces. Um, cap, 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 cap. Well, that was a little bit of an interruption. I'm here on my own, and the enemy team is still managing to attack me. Now, we're going to have a look at a couple of the features that I'm able to demo while I'm here alone. Unfortunately, while I was hoping to be able to get... No, that is a triple A gun. No, 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 don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Under that, and be careful not to hit those wires. They are collidable. I will explode if I hit the power lines. All right. We should be good for the moment, I think. Uh, we're going to be looking at a couple of the features that I can actually demo while I'm here alone. I was hoping to have more people available, but unfortunately a combination of time zones and just personal availability meant that uh, I wasn't able to get my regular test crew available for, um, for this video. So we're going to look at a couple of the features coming up that we can actually look at alone. The first one is going to be troop deployment and mortar troops. So we're on the Kosovo map, we're in the Blackhawk, just going to put down here. Now you'll notice we have a new troop icon. We've got our regular troop icon, our man pad icon, which we have four on board, and we have a new icon, the mortar trooper, which is under the T key. So we're going to deploy some. But first things first, if we look above the helicopter, you'll see we've got a wireframe of a soldier that goes between coloured and just a wireframe, just sitting here. This is the new troop deployment feature. So... Wire zones, I can't deploy troops there, but if I put this icon, say, right here, and then hit T, a mortar team is going to come out, and they're going to run over to that position that I indicated, and that is the point that they're going to set up. Likewise, if I want to put one over here, they'll hop out of the helicopter, and they're going to set up their mortar position just there. This is the new feature, allowing you to deploy your troops exactly where you want them on ground attack. This opens up a whole host of new features. Being able to deploy troops like this means you'll be able to set up ambushes using the uh, anti-tank troopers. You'll be able to more accurately position where you want the man pads to go rather than just dropping them out of the door of the helicopter. And more importantly, if Jetcats chooses to add additional troops in the future, like say for example some kind of special forces troop, you'd be able to use this new feature to order those troops to target specific objectives. So, we've deployed the mortar troops, what happens now? Well. From the perspective of the Blackhawk, nothing. The goal of Halliborn is different from games like World of Tanks or War Thunder, where the objective is not to destroy all of the aircraft in the air, but to use the aircraft, the helicopters, to manipulate the forces on the ground. And the mortar troops are a new feature that has been added in an attempt to get different classes of helicopter to work together to this goal. The Black Hawk and other transport helicopters have the ability to deploy the mortar troops, but they can't issue them orders. To issue orders, you need a scout helicopter. So here we are in our scout helicopter of the day. Now all of the scout helos in Halliborn have now been equipped with targeting and radio equipment that allows them to communicate with the mortar teams. Mortars availability, and we can see at the bottom of the screen we have mortars available, which we should probably jump back out of that for a moment before I crash into the trees. That would have been embarrassing. All right, we'll show that a little bit closer once we are actually get closer to the area. But getting back to the point, the scout helicopters now have a radio that they can use to communicate with any deployed mortar troops anywhere on the map. The more mortar troops that are available, the more shots they are able to fire, and they are directed by the scout helicopters. So you can take out a base now beyond visual range by having a large number of troop helicopters dropping off mortar troops within the area of the base and having a scout helicopter command the assault by ordering those mortar troopers to engage specific parts of the map. Now I've got to watch out for AAA on approach so I'm going to come in high and from the rear of this base because this is the enemy's final base so it does have the highest number of defences but I should be able to get a pretty good angle on it from over this direction. Come up over the hills here. Right, the base should be just ahead of us. And the troops are just on the road there, so we can see them. Right, that's what I 
slow us down a little here. Make sure we're not in uh, engagement range and hold us steady. No, we, we are being engaged, so we want to pull back just a little. We don't want AAA firing at us. That would void the entire purpose of this. Um, yeah, we should be pretty safe here. Alright, so we hit 6 key, and we can see we have two sets of troopers available. Ammo 20 on each one, and as we move the scope around, if we move it quickly, the zone increases. If we position over the zone and just let it stabilize, it shrinks, and fire one. Both mortar troops cycled, and there we go, the artillery is starting to come in. So a scout helicopter can now sit just outside of AAA range and use the mortar troops to engage. Now as you can see, they're not perfectly accurate, they are mortar troops. There is a bit of dispersion on the shells, but the shells are localized within the area. There we go, we've taken a AAA gun. Now we'll get over here, we'll go for this one next. Send, wait for the reload, and we send the next one through. Uh, no impacts, cycle the next. It looks like one impact there, but it didn't take out the AAA. And there we go. So the next one's down. Wait for the gun to stabilize once again. See, as you can see at the top, we got uh, target damage range, 15 meters. So fully focused in, the shells are going to land within 15 meters of the designated target. And uh, a bit spread out. We'll cycle the next one. And obviously, the more mortar troops that are on the ground, the more troops the scout helicopter can command to fire at any one time, meaning the artillery splashes will be far more intense. Incidentally, this is pretty much how JetCat's plans for the artillery pieces are going to work. The artillery are going to work in a similar fashion, where a heavy helicopter, say a Chinook or something like an MI-8, will be able to sling load artillery pieces onto part of the map and land them. Once they're landed, a scout helicopter will be able to take command of them, much like the mortar troops you see here, and direct the artillery's fire onto set targets around the map. Obviously, the artillery pieces will be far more valuable and will be very much sought after as targets by the enemy team, as having them available is... well, it's very dangerous. Now, the key if this was a live match at the moment, the enemy team would be uh, doing everything they can to try and remove the scout helicopter at this point. Because if you leave it alone for too long, as you can see, I'm just about to clear out all of the manned positions in the base. There we go. So the base is now unmanned. The only thing that's keeping that base capped is the vehicles. But it took two sets of troops and at least a couple of minutes to do so. And there's our last set of, uh, last set of shells downrange. And no impact on the truck, unfortunately. We can flick back to our mains. And if we look down below us, since we're out of ammo, our two sets of mortar troopers have now despawned. So we would need new troops apply, uh, applied and deployed in order to be able to continue this assault. Ah, we'll rip up the rest of this base while we're here. Oh, 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 hang on, that's, oh, 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 that's, that's got a lot of guns. Now this is the second thing that I wanted to show here. They've changed the way AAA works. In the past, AAA has been incredibly lethal, especially the uh, the mobile AAA vehicles. Why did that one explode? Um, the mobile AAA vehicles in particular have been incredibly dangerous to the point of, well, being overpowered. Let's, let's sort of be honest here. Assaulting bases was usually a case of throwing helicopters one after another at the bases until you finally managed to break the AAA defences and actually take them out. Not so much this time. Ooh, hang on. Wrong weapon, wrong weapon. Not so much anymore. What JetCat have done is the artillery pieces, or the, the AAA rather, has a engagement cone. This cone floats over the top of your helicopter whenever, you can't see it, but over the top of your helicopter whenever you are within AAA range. Now the longer you remain in the area, the more this cone is going to contract, and eventually it will get to the point that these radar-guided AAA guns will rip your helicopter to pieces, as they should. However, if you do not stay in the area for long enough for them to get a, fire, a full firing solution at 100% accuracy, you will be able to quickly nip in and out, performing rapid strikes, taking out base defences, 
with relative safety. There's still a chance that you might get caught in the spray and still get taken out regardless, but it's not going to be pinpoint laser accurate fire at all times. This gives you enough of a window to be able to safely engage with a single helicopter rather than running into those situations where you were continually tossing helicopters at a base in order to break it. Which is a definite improvement. There's actually a whole host of things that I want to show on this dev server, but unfortunately I'm not going to have time to go through the rest, and for the most part I'm going to need... Whoa. I think somebody got hit by the black fire thing. I think that's actually what's happening. As you see, I was able to slip in and just take out that gun before it could actually get a firing solution on me. Break back out to range, and these are just the uh, the 50 cals mounted at the top of the tanks and the trucks, so I can clear these out fairly easily on my own, even with just a scout helicopter. Anyways, this change to AAA actually means two things. Firstly, providing you are intelligent about your tax, you're making high speed, sweeping passes, and you're not sitting stationary above the enemy base and letting AAA blat at you you are, for the most part, going to have an easier time taking out the bases. It'll take a little bit longer as you'll have to sweep in and out, but you'll be able to take out the base fairly easily. On the other hand, the other side of this change means that defenders are going to have to take a more active role in defending their bases, because now it is quite possible that an extremely good pilot in an extremely light helicopter can come through and take out all their base defences all on their own. You will no longer need a team of helicopters to be able to do it. A single helo with a good pilot and the right setup, especially if it's a scout helo with access to mortars, is going to be able to level a base completely on its own. You'll have to address these attacks. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you like the look of what's coming up on Halliborn soon. There will be another one of these videos on patch release day, which will be Sunday for me, Saturday for most of the rest of the world. I'll cover all the remaining features that I haven't covered here that go into that patch in that video. Until then, Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.